Harry did seem to have a moment of sadness there as his father, King Charles, was passing by him at the coronation. In an especially moving moment, Prince Harry watched on from the third row as his father made his way down the abbey aisle after that sacred ceremony. And according to body language expert Darren Stanton, he appeared sad. You know, Harry makes me think of one of those children, and I've known plenty of them, where nobody ever dared to tell him no. I mean, if he had just been allowed to work part-time for the royal family, just keep all the benefits that came with the job he quit, and keep all the military titles, then he would have been perfectly happy. I'm sure it was pretty shocking to him when he was informed that no, he wasn't allowed to just do whatever he wanted to. And ever since then, like a petulant, bratty child, Harry has been lashing out at his family, the country, and the media. And what's going to happen once all of Harry's anger has dissipated? I think that we're going to be left with a shell of a man who is full of regrets. Slowly but surely, I think Harry is coming to understand everything that he gave up. He should have been right there with William at the coronation, with his wife and family supporting their father, the king. But instead, Harry had to sit in the third row behind a big red feather. Thank you, Princess Anne, by the way. It looks like the mighty have fallen, and boy, have they fallen hard. Now, maybe Harry thought that he was being sneaky, but he really wasn't. Obviously, he and Meghan wanted to be half in, half out royals so that they could get all the perks, all the money, all the paid for security. But since he's an irrelevant spare, I don't think he needs it at all because nobody cares about him except for him and maybe Meghan, but she doesn't really care about him. She just cares about herself. I do not think that Harry has a bright future at this point. And I don't care what anybody says, especially what he and Megan say. Harry is not happy. If he really were so happy at life, he wouldn't be walking around with that scowl on his face. I mean, you can just tell he's miserable. See, Meghan Markle was the brains behind this whole operation, and she's just taken Harry along for the ride. She doesn't care about him, come on. She just used that title to try and elevate herself because she didn't have any acting jobs lined up. Now, she was very desperate for cash, and so she decided she was going to go after Harry. The truth is, most irrelevant actresses are finished by the time they're 40, and Megan realized that. So it looks like Harry is finally learning what the word consequences means, and I know that's hard for him. Consequences are hard, Harry. Nobody, though, can be blamed for this situation except for Harry. See, nobody's around to clean up Harry's messes for him anymore. Nobody can sweep his misdeeds under the rug. I know it's difficult for him to accept this, but most people have to learn this lesson a lot earlier on in life. Harry is stuck in the adolescent phase, and he is so stubborn that he may stay there for the rest of his life. It truly is such a waste. And it looks like William has everything that Harry ever wanted. Now, at one point, Harry and William had a great relationship. And then Catherine, too. They loved each other. He even called her the sister he never had. And with his niece and his nephews, it was clear that they really loved each other. It was real love. It is Harry's own fault that he doesn't still have this. And deep down, I think he knows that. But I don't think he'll ever admit it, even to himself. Megan thought Harry had access to a lot more cash than he really does. Now, of course, there is a lot of wealth within the royal family, but see, Harry was just on an allowance thanks to his father and the sovereign purse. And then his brother William inherited the Duchy of Cornwall. So if Harry continued to get money, it would have been thanks to his brother. Most of the jewelry also belongs to the sovereign. It was only Diana's jewelry that could possibly be divvied up. And if they were smart, and if they were patient, they could have played the long game, but well, Megan didn't want to. So instead of actually enjoying a very generous living in London, Megan wanted her name on the deeds. Well, I guess they've got that now. And some people claim that Harry's not sad, that in fact, he's loving his new life. Because alright, I guess to be fair, Harry lives in a gorgeous McMansion, he still does not have to actually work to earn a living, and also he doesn't have to put up with Megan's anger at what she unwittingly married into. So whatever happens with them now, it's not going to be all his fault. After all, it is not Harry who's in charge here, it is Megan who wears the pants in that relationship. And I've heard a lot of people who've been, I think, unfairly critical of Queen Camilla. People are saying that she never really helped Harry and William. 
Well, first of all, I mean, it was such a difficult situation, what with their mother's death and all. I mean, in family photos, it does look like she's your typical stepmother. She took care of her children, but she allowed King Charles to deal with his boys, which I can understand. I don't think it was really a Brady Bunch type situation, and you know what? That is okay. I mean, she is a typical stepmother. She cares for herself and her own. All right. It's something that isn't often discussed, but I still don't see a big problem with it. Because I think by the time she and Charles were really official, Harry and William were older. It wouldn't have made sense for her to try to be their mother figure. It would have been inappropriate. And as a child, Harry faced no consequences whatsoever. So honestly, I don't believe that Harry would have listened to Camilla anyway, even if she had tried to help him. But anyway, Harry not having a mother is simply no excuse for him being so abusive towards his grandmother and his grandfather, who did nothing wrong. The only thing they did was love him and care for him. And the late queen was certainly one of the best queens ever, probably the best queen ever. She was kind, both publicly and privately. She had a great sense of humor. And she didn't brag. She donated to so many causes privately. And of course, that remarkable individual was not racist in the least. We cannot criticize the late queen for not telling Charles what to do with Harry. That was not her responsibility. Why was Harry always just allowed to get away with breaking the rules? I mean, actually, King Charles broke many rules just to try to cover up for him. And Harry had problems even before his mother passed away because he was always very jealous. He always wanted attention, especially from his mother. He wanted to have her all to himself, even though his older brother existed the whole time. He was the one who Harry was always so jealous of, too. And that, I think, is a big part of why Harry married beneath him. Harry also has a past of being abusive towards women. I don't think he ever really loved anyone except for himself. And we can't say that Harry didn't have anyone to look up to. He had his grandmother and his grandfather. And I understand, he never saw Camilla as a mentor. That makes sense. They were not a blended family who really got along very well. There was just too much history there. And then, once William left for university, who was Harry looking up to? It looks like nobody. Nobody was there to make him study. Nobody was there to teach him discipline. And that's when he started abusing drugs and alcohol and started being really rude to even his friends. He was just getting a lot worse as he got older, not better. In some ways, Harry was pretty vulnerable. I think somebody like Meghan was always going to see him as easy prey. I mean, in that wedding, come on, that thing was so ridiculous. It seems so fake to me. His family tried to tell him that he needed to slow down. But you know what? He wouldn't listen to them. They tried to tell him to watch out for somebody like Meghan. But see, I think Harry never really had respect for women in the first place. I don't think that he knew what a healthy relationship was like. And so I understand why Camilla did not think it was appropriate to step in and try to mother him. I mean, come on. That would have blown up in her face completely. I think she tried to maintain a respectful distance. They did get closer over the years, but still, it was never going to be the same as having Harry's real mother around. And I think that in some way, she probably walked on eggshells around both William and Harry. She didn't want to make them hate her even more than they already did. And now we have Meghan Markle in Harry's life. I mean, I think she's one of the most hated people in this entire world. There is nothing nice written about her because how could there be anything nice written about her? And I know Harry says she's so hot, but I do not see it. I think she's ugly, or at least the inside of her is ugly. Every time she opens her mouth, more lies spill out. She has done everything in her power to humiliate Harry and to make him a nobody everywhere in the world. I mean, she was always a nobody, so she had to bring him down with her, I guess. And she thinks that Duchess title really makes her a someone. Huh, yeah, honey, that is simply a word. Meghan Markle is a nobody, and she will always remain a nobody. There are many people who tried to give her the benefit of the doubt. They tried to see things from her side. Well, now they've all just been Markle. They realize that, you know what, she really is as bad as everybody says she is. She's a bully. She's an evil witch. There is nothing important about her. And we can say the same for Harry. Harry's a wuss. I don't think he ever really had anybody except for his brother. And just look at what he did to that relationship. See, Megan and Harry do not understand how to create a healthy life together, because on their own, they're such complete messes. 
And now he's in her trap and he's stuck there. She treats him like her meal ticket, but they do have a lot in common. Both of them are liars, both of them are eaten up with jealousy, both of them are pathetic and they cannot be trusted. It's all about Megan though. Harry is not allowed to make anything about himself at this point. He is completely whipped by her demands because he cannot stand up to her. And just look at what she put him up to. I will always believe that it was her, it wasn't Harry, who wanted to make the Queen's last years on this earth in absolute misery. And for that, I will never forgive her. 